Final Fantasy XI is a fantastic MMORPG, but when you first log in, it could be a little confusing on what you're supposed to do. And it could be a bit overwhelming to a point where it makes you quit. Well, this is exactly why I wanted to make this video. I want to show players that when you first log in, you can make some kill. You can start a main storyline quest that helps you progress through the game. And you can also pick up some repeatables so it helps you progress through the game, levels your job, and makes you a little bit of gill on the side. So if this all sounds good, stay tuned. Before we dive in, I want to clarify that this guide is meant for players that are starting with the Federation of Windhurst. Everything that I'm going to be talking about and showing you guys is going to be dealing with Windhurst and only Windhurst and not the other two nations. So if you started with the other two nations, but watch this guide and like it, please let me know and I'll make a guide for those two nations as well. All right, let's get started. When you first log in, there should be an item waiting for you called the Adventure Coupon in your inventory. Now, I believe every time you create a character, you should start with this item and you should be able to hand this in to an NPC called the Jack of Spades. He should literally give you 50 gil. 50 gil! Okay, so it's not a lot, but it's something, right? Now that you're 50 gil richer, let's go ahead and get your first mission called Harutu Runes Experiment. Now, I know I'm saying Harutu, to to Haru, Haru, Haru. I don't, I don't know how to say it, but it's going to be the first quest that you get or the first mission that you get in Final Fantasy XI, that is going to be your main mission, your main storyline that you're gonna wanna follow to unlock a bunch of things that I don't wanna spoil for you, but it's totally worth it. You're gonna notice one thing. In Final Fantasy XI, you're not gonna see quest indicators above NPCs' heads, so when you're running around, you're not gonna just be aware of what you can pick up and what you can't pick up. So typically, to activate these kinds of quests, you need to talk to the NPC. Now, when we're talking about missions, the main mission, the main storyline in Final Fantasy 11, you can always get these quests by talking to a Windhurst gate guard. Now these gate guards aren't going to be labeled gate guards, but you can find them at the exit gate of Windhurst. So when you're looking to leave Windhurst, you can always find these guards around that exit. Once you obtain your first mission, you can always check the progress by selecting the missions tab in your main menu bar. You can see what you need to do next. Now, remember this game doesn't really hold your hand. So sometimes when a mission has multiple parts, it doesn't always update and say, okay, you need to go to this specific location. Sometimes it doesn't exactly tell you that. So you need to pay attention to the dialogue. But if you're ever lost and you don't know what to do next, there's a great site called Fandom. And so if you type in Final Fantasy XI Fandom and the quest name, they'll tell you exactly what you need to do, where to go, and they even give you a map that shows you essentially a location or where you need to go. So if you want a spoiler, if you really need help, you can always go there, or you could always ask people in chat. This community is great on Nosomi, and a lot of people are here to help out. All right, you got your 50 gil. You got your first mission. You're all set. Well, not yet. So when I first started playing Eleven, I never picked up repeatable quests. I never picked up quests to begin with. I just ran out there and grinded mobs. And I was really doing myself a disservice because when you look at some of these repeatable quests, the mobs that you grind to level, the mobs that you kill once you step foot outside in the dangerous world, these mobs drop items that these NPCs want and will give you gold for. So you're really kind of screwing yourself over by not picking up these quests and getting free gill. You have to kill these mobs anyway to level, so you might as well get the items they drop and make some gill from it, right? There are three specific quests I want to go over in which you can find in Windhurst. Now, just to let everybody know, you don't necessarily need to go to the NPC, talk to the NPC, and pick up the quest because these mobs that you're going to fight are gonna drop these items regardless. Whether you have the quest or not, you're still gonna be able to get these items. So I'll give you the location of where you can pick up these quests, but remember, you don't need to go get these to start these quests. You don't need to physically have this in your quest log to actually do them. You just need to know what they want. So for the first quest, Creepy Crawlers. You can find this in Windhurst Woods and I-6 on your map. You need to basically gather three crawler calculus and you'll get 600 guild for this every time. 600 guild. The second quest is called Mandagorian Mad. 
You can find this in Windhurst Walls at E5 on your map. Now these guy, this guy will want a few different items, but I would stick to the four leaf Mandagorian bud because you can find these Mandagorians right outside town and they will eventually drop this bud. Now I believe this item specifically, you can only have one in your inventory at a time. I could be wrong, but some of these items you can only get one. So keep that in mind. If you pick up a Mandagorian bud and you see another and you get a message saying you don't have the specific requirements for it, that means you already have it in your inventory and you might as well go hand the quest in next time you're in town. The third quest called Teacher's Pet and you can find this in Windhurst Waters at L6. Now this NPC is going to want bird feathers and also a two leaf mandagorian bud now i can't remember for the life of me if the two leaf or the four leaf can't be stacked or they both can't be stacked meaning you can only have one in your inventory but this is going to be a good start because the mandagorians are right outside town i believe you can eventually kill these crow like creatures that drop bird feathers and the crawlers that you need to get these crawler calculus from you might need to be a little bit higher but i recall that they are also outside of town so that should get you started on giving you some something to do, earning some gill, and also leveling up. While you are doing your repeatables and doing your missions, there are some additional items I want you to be on the lookout for. While you're killing all these mobs, your inventory is going to fill up fast. I mean fast. So there's going to be a lot of things you may want to vendor, but there are some things you may want to hold on to, including the following. Silk thread, beehive chips, and honey, crab meat, Uganda necklaces, and wild onions. Some of these items can be auctioned. Some of these items can be sold to vendors for a good amount of gill. What I want you to do is though, hold on to these items and then go ahead and use the auction. Try the auction out. See what these things have been selling for and see if you can make a little bit of money. Now, these aren't all the best items and the only best items, but these are going to be some of the items that you run in to for the next, you know, 10 to 15 levels or so. All right, now that you got your 50 gill, you got your main mission and you got some repeatable quests, it is time to leave this safe city of Winhurst and go out into the dangerous world. Before you leave, there is one other person I want you to talk to. Now, you can find these guys anywhere as you're about to leave town, and they'll have a WW next to their name. I want you to talk to them, and they're going to give you an option, and one of the options is to cast Signet on you. This Signet lasts like six or seven hours. I, I can't remember exactly how long it lasts, but what this Signet does is it gets cast on you, and every time you kill a mob, you start gaining conquest points. And with these conquest points, you can buy specific items, whether it's gear or teleportation, like return scrolls and things like that. Make sure you do this every time you leave town because these conquest points are going to be extremely important. They're going to be related to your main story and also purchasing items. All right, so I hope you guys found this guide helpful. Now, again, I want to stress that there is a lot I haven't gone over. I haven't gone over the fact that you can use a controller in this game if you can't stand the keyboard settings like myself. I haven't gone over the fact that you can use commands to make your frames better and to have cooldowns on some abilities that require you to use them every 15, 20, 30 seconds. I haven't talked about graphics and making this game look better. I haven't talked about a lot of the basics that go beyond what I've really talked about. So like I said before, if you guys liked this guide and want more guides on more basic things, please let me know. Also, if you're a new player and you're looking for a guild or a link shell, I joined one that is fantastic. A lot of new players, a lot of old players. They're always there really to help out with any questions you have, and they usually try and form parties for XP. So by all means, if you're interested, go ahead, hit me up in the comments, message me, whatever. Um, you can follow me on social media to get uh, in contact with me, or you can catch me streaming on Twitch. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. And if there's anything else you would want me to cover, please let me know. Have a great week. See you later, everybody.